It's time for the range test that you've all been waiting for. On my left, I have the new Ford Mustang Mach-E. This is a dual motor extended range model. And then of course, I have a dual motor extended range Model Y. Thanks to one of our viewers, Travis. Thanks very much for lending us your car and of course for driving it because we're gonna be doing this caravan style. I'll be driving the Mach-E first. He'll be following in the Model Y at exactly the same speed. We'll be using the radar adaptive cruise control in both vehicles. Then we're gonna swap halfway through and see which makes it back to San Jose. The first thing we should do is cover some of the ground rules. Both vehicles have their automatic climate controls on and set to 70 degrees. We've agreed that we're going to do this caravan style. So again, I will be in the lead at the beginning. Travis is going to follow in his Model Y, and then we're going to swap halfway through. We're going to have the radar adaptive cruise control on, set to five miles an hour above the speed limit, and keep up with traffic. So the actual speed will vary based on how traffic is flowing around us. As we start this test, keep in mind that the Tesla Model Y is more efficient than the Mach-E, but it has a smaller battery. Battery. Its battery pack is 75 kilowatt hours nominal. The battery pack in the Mach-E is quite large. It's basically 99 kilowatt hours nominal. So this battery pack is almost as big as the battery pack we find in the Tesla Model X. However, not all of it is available to the user. Only about 88 kilowatt hours of this pack is usable to you as the driver, and the Mach-E is not as efficient as the Model Y. That's why the range is not going to be quite as long in some situations as the Model Y. Now that said, keep in mind that not every company uses the same method for calculating EPA range. There are essentially two ways you can do this. They are both allowed by the EPA, and one seems to yield longer numbers than the other. The outdoor temperature at the moment is 63 degrees Fahrenheit. It's theoretically going to get up to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit today. I am in Northern California in March. This is a really great time of year to be in California weather-wise, so keep that in mind. If you're in a colder climate, obviously the range numbers will be different. And they're especially going to be skewed in favor of the Tesla Model Y for an important reason. This Ford Mustang Mach-E does not have a heat pump, and the Model Y does. The Model Y is the first Tesla to have that feature. Heat pumps are considerably more efficient at heating a cabin, especially in mild weather climates. Energy consumption to heat the cabin in weather between 30 and 40 degrees is likely going to be three to 400% higher in the Mach-E than in the Tesla Model Y. Now, rather unfortunately, I live in a very temperate climate. I don't have the opportunity to test both of these vehicles in an ice box. So for range figures in the cold, I would direct you to some of the other channels that will do that kind of testing. The last thing to keep in mind is that I'm performing this test on March 13th, 2021. Software updates will obviously have an impact on general vehicle efficiency. We see that in the Tesla lineup for sure. We're also promised to see that in the Ford Mustang Mach-E lineup. So both of these vehicles have the current release software as of March 13th, 2021. When comparing relative efficiency, it's also important to keep in mind that the Tesla Model Y has wider tires than the Mach-E does. Even though it consumes less power per mile of motion, it has considerably wider tires. 225s on this vehicle, 255 with tires on the Model Y. I've said this before and I'll say it again, EV efficiency in modern Teslas is definitely very, very impressive. With a few miles under our belt, I should tell you one interesting thing that I noticed yesterday. I was actually doing this exact same range test against a Porsche Taycan 4S yesterday, and uh, I noticed that the Mustang Mach-E speedometer is just a little bit off, actually. So according to this, I have the cruise control set to 70 miles an hour, but according to Waze and according to the Tesla Model Y that is driving right behind me, we're actually going 71 miles an hour. Over the course of this test loop, that means that the odometer in the Mach-E is gonna be about four miles off. As we roll through the time lapse, let's talk about the drive route. We're going from northern San Jose near Milpitas on I-680 for about five miles where it meets Highway 101. We're on US 101 for 33 miles. The speed limit in both of these sections is 65 miles an hour. From that point, we hop on to California Route 25 for 75 miles. This is mainly rural highway, 55 mile an hour speed limit with an elevation change of about 1800 feet. So we start off at about sea level in San Jose, go up to 1800 feet and then back down. This puts the Mach-E at a disadvantage in this section of the test because the Mach-E is notably heavier than the Tesla Model Y. And obviously it's gonna take more energy to get you up and over that mountain pass. The elevation change and the rural setting is the reason that I chose California Route 25. It is just prettier than US 101 and US 101 doesn't have as much of an elevation change over that same distance. Distance. 
Now let's talk about the aerodynamic realities here because a lot of folks have asked me to make sure that we trade up positions now and then. Again, we went down with one vehicle in the lead, up with the other vehicle in the lead. Now, I've spoken to a number of aerodynamic experts at a number of different laboratories about this, and they all say that with very slippery coefficient of drag vehicles like these two vehicles, we're not gonna see much of a difference. You will certainly notice an improvement if you're drafting behind a big rig and you're really close, say within 10 feet or so but we're talking about two vehicles lead follow on a highway at highway speeds, maintaining at least two seconds behind the vehicles. And when you take a look at this aero chart, this is showing you what the drag profile looks like, what the aero profile looks like when the vehicle is half a car length away at the top and then one and a half car lengths away at the bottom. That is considerably closer than a two second following distance at highway speeds. So essentially at 70 miles an hour, you're not going to notice much of a benefit if you are staying a safe distance away from the vehicle up front, bottom line. I get a lot of questions about the Better Route Planner website, so let's dive into what the Better Route Planner said for these two vehicles. You can see on your screen right now, looking at the route for the Tesla Model Y, that it is calling this a 244 mile trip, 244, 246, they're pretty close. Uh, Google says 246 for this particular trip. Uh, it says four hours, 19 minutes, so again, pretty close to what Google is saying, but you'll notice there is a DC fast charge stop right there. And according to this, we're gonna have to go from 13% to 19% in order to make this complete trip. And that at the end, we would end up with a 6% charge at the destination. This is using the Better Route Planner's stock definitions for the Tesla Model Y that we were driving in this video. Next, I'll show you the route planner for the Mach-E. Uh, I'm not entirely clear why it says 243 miles rather than 246. There's some little variation there on the Better Route Planner site doesn't make too much difference because both of these were pretty accurate. Now on the Mach-E, they have very limited data on it. So I just plugged in my own average. So far over 2000 miles, I've been averaging three miles per kilowatt hour. So that's what this is based on. You can see that it is estimating no DC fast charge stop required, 16% battery at the destination. Let's see how that pans out. Don't stop. We're now at the halfway point. We've turned around and we're headed back north. I am currently at 60% battery charge and the Tesla is unfortunately just a little bit below that. I'm actually a little surprised by that because even though this has a bigger battery pack, the Tesla is notably more efficient. Let's see how full that battery is. 831, area code said 52%, 256 WHV. Would you like to reply? There we go, so 52%. Uh, versus now 59%. So we have just a little bit of a leg up. We'll see how that continues as we head back north because in this area, the speed limit is higher. So aerodynamics are gonna play a bigger effect from this point back.
It may be a little premature to call it, but I think that we already have a hint about how this is going to go. Uh, according to my navigation system here, I have 67 miles left to get back to the office. I have 82 miles of range, according to the relatively pessimistic Ford rangeometer there, 36% battery life left. The Tesla initially said it needed to stop somewhere in order to make it to the office, and now it is saying it needs to go below 65 miles an hour to make it to the next supercharger stop. And it's theoretically gonna make it to that supercharger stop with about 3% battery left. So it looks at this point like the win is going to go to the Ford Mustang Mach-E, but the efficiency award still goes to the Tesla Model Y. Based on what I've seen so far, it is at least 20% more efficient than the Ford Mustang. However, this battery pack is at least 30% larger. Let's cover a few things that you might be wondering that maybe I should have mentioned earlier. The Tesla Model Y is set to its maximum regen. I know a lot of people are overly obsessed with the regen settings in long range tests with the Model Y. Honestly, for this kind of test, it doesn't matter because we really haven't been doing much stopping. And so the regen setting, as long as you're within that regen envelope, doesn't matter whether it's on high or low. As far as the Mach-E goes, this does not have the one pedal driving mode enabled. It has been in drive and most of the time has been in unbridled mode which is a silly drive mode, mind you. But uh, I actually forgot about that. I meant to put it in Whisper, but uh, three quarters of this drive was in unbridled, but the last quarter has been in Whisper. At this point in the drive, the Tesla Model Y had been telling us that it did not have the energy to reach its final destination for a while. It was also telling us to reduce speed in order to try and make it to the destination. Now, Travis decided to try and maintain speeds as we had been this entire video, and I'm really thankful about that because it gave us a better picture of what these vehicles would be like in real world. So obviously, if we'd started crawling at this point and just going 50 miles an hour on the interstate we could have saved some electrons but instead we kept it going uh, basically the same way that we had been before we'd initially thought about using the morgan hill supercharging station as a possible stop but travis decided to risk it and then we continued on to the station in south san jose Well, this is sometimes how these tests end. I have uh, abandoned Travis at the Tesla supercharger and uh, I'll be heading back to the office. So the net result is that the Tesla Model Y, at least in temperate weather like this, again, keep in mind the heat pump system is gonna make it much more efficient for heating the cabin in cooler weather, does not have the same range that we find in the Ford Mach-E. The Capital Expressway Supercharger Station was at mile 224 of this trip. We had an estimated 12 miles left to go. According to the instrument cluster on the Model Y, it had 10 miles of range left and about 5% battery charge. We assumed that we could have made it the rest of the distance in the Model Y if we treated it a little bit more gently, but that would have left Travis stranded somewhere without a supercharger station because we did not start the trip at a supercharger station. We were not going back to one. That would have meant that he would have to uh, slow charge for a while and then found a supercharger at some other point. So it just made sense for him to stop here at the Capital Expressway supercharger station. Now at this point in time, the Mustang was showing 16% battery charge and according to the instrument cluster, 40 miles of range. But if you do the count calculations out on the vehicle. We probably had about 45 miles of range based on this particular trip's round trip efficiency, as well as the running total on the Mach-E, which is just over three miles per kilowatt hour. Assuming we could have made it the last 10 miles of range indicated on the Tesla Model Y, that would have put its range in this test at about 234 miles. 
If we apply that same calculation to the pessimistic rangeometer on the Mustang Mach-E, it would have ended up with a range of 268 miles, pretty spot on for the 270 mile EPA rating. As always, remember that there are a ton of things that will impact your EV's real world range. Your driving style, the weather outside, the climate in your area, the elevation, the road surfaces, all of that is going to play a role in how far your EV can go on a charge. You should also know that the Mustang Mach-E ended up consuming 2% of its battery, heating the battery. And that is something that I probably should have accounted for a little bit better. The vehicle spent the night overnight with a completely full battery pack. It got down to 40 degrees overnight where the vehicle was garaged at night. The next morning, I tried to warm the battery up by driving it around for a few miles, but I realized that I couldn't really drive it too far or DC fast charge it because I needed it to still be full by the time Travis arrived with his completely full Model Y. So I ended up driving it around for just four miles, wasn't very long, and then plugged it back in. We plugged the Model Y in when he got here, and we waited till both vehicles said that they were completely charged. The Model Y filled up first, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E said that it was essentially 100% full. It was still drawing down one amp, so I just called that completely full. Honestly, there was not a lot more power that that battery could accept because the charge rate was already really dropping down. So essentially two completely full batteries. The one in the Mach-E was a little bit cooler, so the Mach-E was consuming some power in order to keep the battery warm. Now the Model Y likely also consumed a little bit of power towards the end of the trip because the moment that you tell it, yes, I would like to DC fast charge, if the battery was not warm enough, then Tesla would start consuming a little bit of power in order to keep the battery at an optimum temperature. Unfortunately, with both of these vehicles, we do not know exactly how much energy that really was. The Mustang Mach-E says 2%. There is no correlation graph on the Model Y, but we know that both these vehicles logically had at least some battery heating going on at some point. With all those disclaimers out of the way, be sure and sound off down there in the comments section below. A lot of folks were expecting the Tesla Model Y to beat the Ford Mustang Mach-E in terms of range, but again, I would remind you, the Mach-E has a really, really big battery pack. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comments section below, and if you live in the Bay Area and you would like to subject your EV to a similar range test, you can always feel free to reach out to us at It's a Conspiracy conspiracy at alexandautos.com, and uh, we might arrange a similar road trip for you. So let me know down there in the comment section below. You can sound out to us. Uh, be sure and find us over at facebook.com slash alexandautos. You can see what I'm driving this week. Also check out the merch store at awaymerch.com, and I'll see all of you later.